So I'm going to be using a T15. If you can get it on a, a driver like this, that's fine. Or if you got them on a like, screwdriver attachment, that's awesome as well. You can even get in there with a socket type. I'm going to start backing them out. You'll start seeing how they start coming through the actual upper portion of the clock spring. And there you go. That stopped it from spinning, so I ain't got to worry about it getting oriented wrong. Go ahead and back off the other ones as well. So now we've got the three T15s backed out. We didn't take them all the way off, but we left them still in a few threads, mainly to keep everything locked in place. And now what we can do, we can grab the upper and bottom portion. It's going to be kind of flimsy, but when you pull, it'll unsnap. Uh, what you'll see here, this is your clock spring. It comes with a little pigtail harness on it. So when you get ready to go back with it, you got to make sure everything's straight, which that's the way we left it, and that's the reason why we left it there, so we don't have to worry about that. Now the portion right here that you see the little shiny dots or lines is actually what they call the steering angle sensor. Clock springs out of the way. Now we can get to the internals of the upper portion of the steering column. The item right here that's around from the 3 o'clock down to the 6 o'clock position, uh, black piece with the little dotted lines, is actually what they call the steering angle sensor. That tells the car basically where you've got the steering wheel in position for your everything from your stability control and ABS. Now it's held in place with one Phillips screw, small one. You just need to back it out. It's right down here where that yellow link is. Let's back it off. So I don't have to drop it. Now we can grab a hold of that sensor and start wiggling and pull it off. So there you go. That's your steering angle sensor. All right, so we grab our new one. All we're going to do is line everything up. It guides itself down in there. You've got a little mounting boss that sticks up, which is where one of the three clock spring bolts went. That's one of them right there. And that's where your Phillips went. So you kind of line everything up. Make sure that yellow link is on the back side of the sensor. And now we will just reinstall the Phillips screw we took off and snug it down. Now we just got to reinstall the clock spring and make sure that we get the steering wheel on properly and then we'll have everything pretty much done as far as the install of the steering angle sensor. All right, so look right here at the multi-function switch, that little white piece is the turn signal arm that comes in contact with the raised area on this clock spring right here. That's the cancel portion. Now you right here, you got a red lock that keeps the clock spring locked in place. Our steering column has a notch straight up so everything's still lined up. Uh, take the protective sleeve off the pins here. Now we'll just be guiding it down here. It'd be kind of, we got to go right where the steering angle sensor is. There's a portion that the uh, pins will go down in. It's kind of funnel shaped so it'll guide itself into the uh, connector down below. Just kind of get it started. Put it over the steering column and then start pressing down until it's fully seated. Kind of look at all your fasteners and where they should line up. Everything should still be straight up. Line up till it fully snaps in place. Now all we got to do is work on tightening down the three Torx screws. All right, so I'm tightening down the last of the three torque screws. Uh, everything's fully seated now. We'll go ahead and make sure it looks like it's fully seated. We'll also go ahead and get ready to pull that red lock off that we're no longer needing. Um, just check that everything moves smoothly. As long as it moves fully freely, we're good to go. Here's a quick pointer for when you're going to reinstall the clock spring. Not only does the steering wheel have to be straight, keep an eye on your turn signal. If you've got it either in the down or up position for left or right, the cam that makes contact with the clock spring will be too far in and then the clock spring will sit on top of it. So definitely make sure you've got it in the rest position. You don't have it turning left or right. You've got it in the dead center. That way the clock spring sits completely flush. So definitely make sure you do that. Now it's time to reinstall the steering wheel. We've already taken the lock off. Everything's lined up where it needs to be. We're going to go ahead and guide the wires. Back to this little opening on the side of the steering wheel. Now the steering wheel is actually keyed to go directly only one way on the steering column. So as you're rotating it around, it will line up and then it will be on. There is no, I can turn it this way, I can turn it that way. It doesn't work that way. It is keyed to only go on one way. So now what we'll do is get our 10 millimeter Allen 
bolt, put it back through there, and we'll get ready to tighten it down and torque it down. Center bolt, you're going to torque it down to 52 foot-pounds. 52 foot-pounds on the bolt that holds the steering wheel to the steering column. Remember that, 52 foot-pounds. Once it's torqued down, we're going to move on to the airbag assembly, reinstalling it. We've already hooked up, I've gone ahead and hooked up the white connector we took loose earlier. All we got to worry about is now plugging in the airbag. We got two of them right here. We also got that wire tie that had that router on it that we put on that stud. And then we got the horn pad. Now we just position it correctly on the steering wheel, sit it down, and then of course we get to the back side to put the two 10 millimeters on, which is how we started this whole procedure. Once we're done, we'll make sure the operation of the turn signal is working fine. It cancels when we go left, cancels when we go right. We want to make sure everything steering column related is working because we were working on it. We didn't want to have to accidentally break something. So if you had done the steering angle sensor, if you'd done the uh, speed control switch, if you had done the multi-function switch, all that, airbag, horn buttons, the, the switches here for your, your menu as well as ready. Make sure they all work. We were working on that area. We want to make sure we didn't cause any damage. So there you have it. You got to see what you need to do step by step to remove and replace your steering angle sensor. Now, like I mentioned earlier, there's one item that you may not be able to do once you replace it, you need to initialize the sensor. It's basically calibrating itself, seeing where the steering wheel is, and learning everything. Now, you've got to have the proper scanner to do that. And it's basically a driving procedure. We, we have a few items during the test where we have to sit still, don't touch anything. Then there's a portion where we actually have to drive it and do three-point turns and get it up to a certain speed. But you've got to have the proper scanner. So if you don't have a scanner that's capable of doing that, then you definitely got to visit the dealer who does have the proper tools to do it with. Nonetheless, at this point I ask for any kind of thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget to like me on Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter and you can also check me out on Instagram. If you got any kind of comments or suggestions about today's video or anything Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram, as always, please feel free to email me at david at motorcitymechanic.com and I'll try to get back to you in a timely manner. And as always, thank you for watching these videos.